A strong 7.3 magnitude earthquake has rattled northeastern Japan. There's been no immediate reports of casualties or damage, and no tsunami warning has been issued at this stage. The quake struck with its epicenter off Japan's northern island of Hokkaido at a depth of 590 kilometres. In March 2011, a magnitude 9 quake devastated northeastern Japan. A record heat wave in the United States has led a nuclear plant to shut down after the water used to cool down the turbine became too warm. The operator of the Millstone Power Station in the state of Connecticut says it shut down one of its two reactors on Monday evening. The utility says the temperature of seawater used to cool the turbine and other equipment rose beyond the safety limits of 23.8 degrees Celsius. It's the first time the reactor has shut down due to excessively warm water since the plant began operating in 1975. Officials in Belgium have ordered a nuclear plant to be shut down. Operators believe they discovered cracks in a containment vessel in one of the reactors. Officials with the Federal Agency for Nuclear Control said the number three reactor at the dual plant will remain offline until at least the end of the month. The plant is located about 20 kilometers north of Antwerp. The operators discovered what they believe to be cracks during a regular safety inspection. A Dutch firm built the reactor more than 40 years ago. It's the same type of reactor used in the U.S., Germany, and Spain. People in Belgium rely on nuclear power for more than half their electricity. But officials have decided to scrap all nuclear plants by 2025. I think they're preparing for a major power outage, which would cause um, nuclear power plants to go into meltdown. If anyone hears of any other places that are distributing potassium iodine, let me know. This comes from Pennsylvania. The Department of Health will be handing out potassium iodine tablets at several locations on Thursday, according to a press release sent out on Monday. Potassium iodine, often referred to by its chemical formula KI, can help protect thyroid tissue from cancer in the event of a radioactive release. Anyone who lives, works, or attends school within 10 mile radius of one of the state's five nuclear power plants, including Limerick Generating Station, could obtain four potassium iodine pills per adult in their household. There are smaller doses for children based on age. Anyone can take potassium iodine as long as they are not allergic to it. The pills are considered an emergency measure that would only be taken if people are directed to do so by the governor or other state health officials. Tablets can be picked up at the following locations in our area from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And it mentions the Keystone Fire Company, 240 North Walnut Street, Boyertown, Pennsylvania. Um, the Kimberton Fire Company, 61 Firehouse Lane, Phoenixville, Pennsylvania. Tablets will also be available from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Pottstown Health Center at 364 King Street in Pottstown. Anyone who cannot pick up pills during these specific pickup times can obtain them at any time at county and municipal health departments or state health centers. You can view a map of a 10 mile radius center on Limerick Generating Station by clicking this link. So what does the governor of Pennsylvania know that's coming that they're covering up and he decided to take the bull by the horns and issue potassium iodine tablets to the citizens, all citizens within 10 miles of a nuclear power plant. And actually this is false security because of the radiation bloom which has been shown to happen in Japan. It can go for miles and miles and miles. Radiation does not equally distribute, it follows the air currents.
had visual proof of the meltdown at, at Fukushima Unit 1 a week into the accident and no one else had offered any? What did you have that the other, the other sources didn't? Well, I was part of a homegrown effort to ascertain the damage which was occurring along with Paul Gunter from Beyond Nuclear in Washington, D.C., and uh, Arnie Gunderson, most people know of him now, but with Fairway yep. Associates. And so every night during that first week especially, we were pulling our data and reviewing photos or whatever documents we could get a hold of. And on the sixth day of the accident, I finally got caught up enough to try to look for a video online, and sure enough, I found one from a Japanese military helicopter flyover. And after about eight minutes, I, something in my mind said, there was something important in there that I missed. So I went back and through, through it and found something that must have registered in my subconscious. What I found was during an obscure part of the video where the camera was actually just being jostled around, there was a few frames with what looked like molten fuel leaking out of a gap at the top of reactor number one. And it was very similar to the footage I had obtained from Chernobyl when they had helicopters fly over to ascertain the damage. So what I found explained the confusion that was being published published at the time that they couldn't understand where these high levels of great activity were coming from near Unit 1. So I tried to uh, relay this message to Japan by calling the United States Nuclear Regulatory Commission, who of course has no authority in that, and they have an emergency response center, but they did not want my data. They did not want your data? No. I said, look, I'm not just, you know, I, I testify to you people all the time. I'm not just the person calling to suggest you put ice in the reactor like they did with, you know, probably 50,000 phone calls. I'm calling to tell you some data that you ought to pass on to the Japanese because they're having some confusion as to where this radiation is coming from. They did not want it. Do you, you know, there, there's, there are all kinds of uh, wild theories out there, but but it's been repeatedly suggested that the Fukushima accident looks a little funny, too. Are you picking up any funny vibes as you look at that, as uh, as though it, anything to suggest that it was anything other than a naturally occurring disaster? No, it, it definitely was naturally occurring. The earthquake possibly, and there was conjecture about this, I think by now uh, the Japanese company, TEPCO, knows the answer, I think that the, one of the coolant pipes at the top of the reactor fractured during the earthquake, and that is what explains the glowing red molten fuel dripping from it that I claim to have seen on the video. Move over, Blinky and Donatello. It looks like we'll be adding the pale grass blue butterfly to the list of animals made more adorably hideous by man's radioactive folly. Mutated versions of the insect have been consistently found among the neon green forests of Fukushima and are the strongest evidence of a long-term radiation problem in northern Japan. Now, apparently, this species happens to be very susceptible to radiation, which has rumpled their wings and dented their eyes. But other species have been found to be relatively unaffected. Silk moths, for instance, are like, Nuke me, Daddy! Nuke me all day long! Ah! Snap it to a Slim Jim! So it's unclear whether or not the remaining throngs of people who still insist on living in the area will be giving birth to rumpled up, dented eyed babies in the coming years. If it turns out that humans can withstand Fukushima's low level radiation, then that's good news all around. Unless, of course, a Mothra sized butterfly gets jealous and decides to even the playing field. Well, an NHK survey is showing now that the majority of Japanese people think the country should reduce its dependence on nuclear power as a source of energy. NHK conducted the poll over the weekend and received responses from 1,046 people. The respondents were asked to choose from three options that the government has presented for the nation's reliance on nuclear energy. Zero percent, around 15 percent, or somewhere between 20 and 25 percent by the year 2030. Results show that 36 percent favored the zero option, 39 percent choosing the middle, and 15 percent uh, did tick the highest option. Nuclear power had accounted for about 26% of Japan's energy supplies before last year's nuclear disaster. The government uh, has been reviewing its energy policy and is seeking public input on the nation's dependence on nuclear power generation.